Scott Joyman, I was the head football coach for your LaSalle answers, Pat McLaughlin. And uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Coach, tough game Friday night. 10 uh, 3 loss up at Kettering to the uh, Firebirds of Fairmont. And uh, just kind of one of those frustrating yeah. evenings where just nothing went right for you offensively. Yeah, you know, it's, that's, that's a good word for it. Frustrating, um, especially when. Uh, the defense played well enough for us to win, um, and special teams did a really good job uh, as well. So uh, they, had, they had 177 yards offense, probably, I would say, probably 165 of that was all rushing, and they have been averaging, what, two to 300 yards a game. So our defense did a good job, gave us the ball in spots, turned it over. Uh, we just couldn't make any plays, or when we did make a play, get a positive play, there was a penalty, there was a sack, there was a negative, some type of negative play. So our focus this week is to clean that up, and obviously, uh, defense is playing well. We got to pick up our end on offense. It seemed like you guys were your worst enemy offensively yeah. on Friday night, where penalty, um, you know, somebody going, you know, running the wrong route, um, you know, a variety of different things. It seemed like you were, you know, almost uh, stopping yourselves as much as their defense was. Yeah, there's no doubt. Now, they're, they're good on defense. Um, you know, against Springfield last year, um, the, the state runner-up, they only gave up 17 points and seven of those were late, so it was only 14. You look at their scores, they, they rarely give up over two, over three scores a game, so uh, no excuses. Um, you know, we, we address it with our team. Uh, we got to be better on offense, and really thus far, um, first game of the year and then this game, you know, we, we, we struggled offensively. Um, I think we've done some things this week in practice, practicing a little bit different formations, some different guys in there. Uh, and hopefully it makes uh, makes a difference on Friday. Yeah, the basis of your offense has always been, you know, the running game. Yeah. And I think that's kind of been the area that's kind of been stuck yeah. in the mud. Yeah. Has that really been an area of emphasis this week, trying to get that going? Yeah, everything has been. <laughs> <laughs> that and everything else. And, you know, we told, I told the team, the offense on uh, on Sunday or on Monday, rather, when we met, and even Saturday, that there's no small things for us anymore. There's no small details. Everything matters. Uh, every detail is important. So, you know, we, we got five new guys in the offensive line that haven't played before. Uh, new, new, several new uh, H backs, new receivers. Uh, we knew this was going to take a while. Um, you know, defense has more guys that have played, so uh, it's about time for us week four to step up on offense and make some plays. Defensively, you guys leading the uh, GCL in points allowed, ten points per game, uh, give it up just uh, right around two hundred yards per game. Yeah. What's been in your mind? Uh, the reasons for your defense being as efficient as it's been this year? Yeah, well, Co I mean, Chris Majors, defensive coordinator, defensive staff, has done a really good job putting our kids in position to be successful. Uh, before the season even starts, you look at your personnel, you look at what you're going to have, you know, what's going to fit our defense. Uh, we're not the biggest defense, uh, probably that most teams are going to see all year, but we have good speed. And so uh, guys are hitting their, hitting their gaps. One of the things we emphasize is turnovers and tackling, uh, and they've done a good job. Turnover, tackling, and pursuit on defense. So I think our defense has been led by Taj Landrum. He's a captain. He's a senior. He's up up there in the lead in the, in, in the GCL and in total tackles. Brady O'Connor, a sophomore, uh, just keeps improving. And I think, you know, Roy, the unsung guys, those guys up front. Uh, Abney, Peyton Abney stepped up. Alex Curry Ziegler eats up a lot of space. Jake Rhodes uh, has done a fantastic job. So when they, when they play their gaps and they eat up the blocks and it allows, allows the linebackers to run free. And you know, Dior Brumfield, the last two weeks, has had a ton of tackles. So, and we, we play good coverage. Now, th this week's going to be a little bit different. Um, they're going to throw the ball a little bit more, so our back end's going to get tested. But um, all those guys have uh, played played their responsibility. They run to the ball. They create turnovers, and we're, we're good tacklers. It seems like turnovers has been a big uh, thing with your defense. You've created you know three fumbles, intercepted three passes, also got the you know the one on special teams. So it's it's nice when you're in that plus category. I think you were plus five, if I'm correct, in that area. And something that you got to be real happy with. Yeah them being able to take the ball away. Yeah, again, I, mean, I think every every week you ask what, what are the keys and uh, stop the run, run the ball, um, create turnovers and win special teams. And we've done a, we've done a good job in special teams. We've we stopped the run. I think for the most part, uh, we've created turnovers. Now, uh, on the other end of that, we have offense. We've done a good job. We only, we only have one turnover in three games uh, offensively. So uh, everything, well, that's like you said earlier, starts running the ball, and we're, we're going to put a major emphasis on that this week. 
Coach, you welcome in uh, Louisville Trinity this Friday night, uh, the all-time winningest program in the state of Kentucky, 27 state titles. Kind of that legendary program yeah. uh, in the Bluegrass State. You guys took it to them and waxed them last year. Yeah. I think one of your most impressive games that uh, your team played last year down in, in Louisville and uh, kind of a different looking Trinity team this year. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a heck of a homecoming game, huh? So it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's homecoming and, uh, you know, we know that there's no, uh, there, there's no, there's no breaks uh, on the schedule from here on out. It's going to be solid, uh, well coached, solid uh, football teams. And yeah, we, we think Trinity um, is, a, is a GCL, is like a GCL football team. You know, they play Carmel uh, out of Indiana, which is good. They play Center Grove out of Indiana, which is good. They play us. I think they play X. In fact, they might even play Moeller again, too. So they're playing yeah, a, sim play a, Moeller, a, a yeah. similar schedule. Uh, that, that we play with regards to the type of competition, but um, they're very good. Uh, they got a new quarterback this year. They're throwing the ball a little bit more. They'll be similar on defense, um, uh, and they're very impressed with what their linebacker play. The guys uh, that, that are at the second level of their defense, um, that they run around, they're physical, um, and, and they're really good tacklers in space. And Trinity sits at uh, two and one, coming off uh, beating the two times state champion Center Grove last week, double overtime, 29-28. And that broke Center Grove's 30 game winning streak. And it just looks like so much of that offense is centered around that quarterback, yeah. Drew Allen, not only with his passing ability, but with what he does in that run game. Yeah, exactly right. And, um, you know, you, you watch the film, he's an impressive kid. Um, he, he throws the ball pretty well. He's a big kid, 6'2 or 6'3. And maybe the most impressive thing, or maybe the most. Uh, you know, the, the most difficult thing to cover is a quarterback that can run the ball and make plays and extend uh, extend plays. So he can get out of the pocket, they sprint out a little bit. Uh, even when the pocket breaks down, he can make somebody miss in the pocket, get out of the pocket, uh, and then throw the ball downfield, or he can pull it down and run. So uh, he's done a really good job with that the first three games. So we're really going to have to contain him, contain him, keep our eyes on him, uh, and we have a chance to get him down either uh, in the backfield or for a short game, and we're going to have to do it. Two impressive linebackers that you'd mentioned, Cole McLean, and or Cole Wycliffe and Brady McKinney yeah, for sure. uh, the Shamrocks. And that seems what their uh, defense seems to be centered around is those two flying around making a lot of tackles. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what their uh, I'm not sure what their names are, but I know that uh, 44 and 45 and 29 and two uh, those are their backers, and that they they show up on film. Um, and so, like I said, uh, they have a nose for the ball. Uh, when they see an open window, uh, a gap, um, they're going to shoot it and they're going to come and they're going to bring everything that they have. Um, so we're going to have to play discipline football on the offensive line. We're going to have to get to the second level, get our hands on them. Um, and really control uh, control the line of scrimmage first, and then get to the second level and uh, and control them. Boy, another week that you're fa facing an unbelievable place kicker, yeah. Kellen. Of course, hey, they, McLaughlin. What do you, you expect? You right? guys related, or you know, I, you know, there's that related that Kellen McLaughlin had five field goals last week. Found out it was yeah. one off the Kentucky state record, yeah. and. He might have a bigger leg than uh, Will Holt had last week with yeah. Fairmont, which is hard to believe. Yeah, he's a good player. I, I, we, I do have some relatives down in Louisville, but I don't, I don't think he's <laughs> No relation? I don't, think, I don't think we're related, but, uh, <laughs> you know, again, <laughs> just like every, every good football team, you're going to be solid in special teams, uh, and that starts with a kicker. And he can kick it in the end zone, and obviously he can kick field goals too. So I'm not sure if he's going anywhere to college, but to me he looks definitely like a college uh, Division One prospect. Um, so we're going to have to, we've, we've had a good week of practice in the kicking game. We're going to have to really battle on Friday night there. It really could, you know, game with two teams like this, a lot of times you know, it can come down special teams. And Mason's had a great year as well. Yeah. We found out he's now made 50 consecutive uh, PATs. Nice. And he is just, uh, my look at him, just kind of Mr. Automatic, either on PATs or, you know, yeah. you line him up, uh, you know, for field goal. It's good to have that, you know, and, uh, you never know. Games more a couple of years ago, and uh, games gonna come down to a field goal or a PAT. You watch the LSU game and uh, Florida State Friday night. It comes down to a block PAT. It's gonna come down to the kicking game, any tight game, and uh, you know, we feel solid about our kicking game. And uh, you know, I, I know they do too. But it should be a good matchup there. Keys to victory. As always, and we've done a good job with this on defense. Uh, stop the run. Uh, create turnovers, and this week I think I would add uh, contain the quarterback as well as play sol solid special teams offensively. Uh, like you said earlier, everything starts with the run. We got to be able to run the ball uh, and then be able to pass it efficiently uh, and, and, and not turn the ball over, which we've done uh, on offense. We've done a good job of that. So for us, the focus is, is run the ball offensively. 
any message you might have for the folks coming back for homecoming here Friday? Uh, looking forward to it. I believe the 72 team is coming back, right? The 62 team is coming back. So that's what, 40, 50 years of Lancer football team, yeah. are, are coming team. back. And, and anytime you have these guys back on campus, I, I tell our, our, our guys, you know, every time we break, um, and, and break in, in, the, in the weight room in the off season, we do 16 push-ups because we play, we're going to play 16 games and we do it for the South. So I think they're going to be proud of what they see. Uh, I think they're gonna, we're going to put a good, put a good product out there uh, and make those guys that have built this program and created the tradition uh, 40, 50 years ago very proud of this football team. A reminder for everybody coming that afterwards the alumni stag will be back in the uh, cafeteria. Uh, admission is $20 for that, and that includes uh, Laura's Pizza. Uh, some adult beverages and uh, some soft drinks and so make sure after the game you can come back and uh, chat with some fellow alums in the uh, cafeteria. Coach, best of luck tomorrow night and um, bring home a victory. Yes, sir. Thank you.